let's do a constraint management product mix problem. So we have arrangement of some processes for product A and for our product B. And that's a little bit of like the successor and precedent relationships that you see with a project management. Remember project, process, they're the same things to us, okay? So we start off in product A, for instance, with $2 worth of raw materials. It goes to uh, workstation W, it spends 10 minutes there, moves on to workstation X, spends 10 minutes there, moves on to workstation Y, spends 15 minutes there, whereupon we add a $3 purchase, prot, uh, purchase part, and then product A is whisked out, and we forecasted it to be priced at $55 per unit, and our forecasted demand is 90 units per week. Same kind of idea with product at number B. We've got $5 worth of raw materials. It goes to step one, is uh, workstation X for 20 minutes, then off to workstation W for 14 minutes, and then when we hit workstation Y, added a $5 purchase part, and we forecasted the price for B to be $65 per unit, and the forecasted demand for B is $85 per unit. Okay, so we have some uh, labor costs, um, so it's a little bit of a dated example, so I, you know, the dollars per hour is a little bit out. Uh, and we have one dedicated worker, and uh, we'll consider the weekly labor costs to be fixed, so not particular to any product. The plant operates 40 hours per week. Total overhead costs are $3,500 per week. Okay. So our first step is we need to find out how many minutes. So each one of these workstations provides time. So it's time at a workstation. So each one of these workstations provide time. So we need to know how much time can they provide. We also need to know what the contribution margin for these two products are. Because right? remember, our goal is going to be to maximize the contribution margin subject to restrictions on our resources. And so we need to know what that restriction on our resources is. We also need to know what the contribution margin for each of those products are. So we remember a contribution margin for A, contribution margin, and that's just going to be equal to the, the $55 price minus the direct material costs. Okay. 55 minus the $5 for parts, and so that's $50 in contribution margin for A. Same kind of idea for B, $65, and then we take off the cost of the parts, which is $10, and contribution margin for B is $55. So we've got those that, that basic element done. Okay. We also want to note that the plant operates 40 hours per week which means how many minutes is that? Because all our workstation time is in minutes, so that's 40 hours times by 60 minutes per hour, and so we have a total of 2,400 minutes available uh, for each one of these constraints. Okay. So how much does product A take? So we need to now, now we need to know how much of each one of the resources, now we're focused in on the resources now, each one of these resources, which is workstation W, X, and Y, uh, how much time is used if we could produce as much as A and B as we could possibly sell. So product A, we can sell 90 units, right? and our parameters, we look up and we see, okay, uh, A consumes 10 minutes, times 10, and so product A is going to consume a total of 900 minutes. I go to uh, X, workstation X, just keeping with product A, so I just have to look at one uh, line. Uh, we, again, we still produce the same 90. It takes 10 minutes at workstation X, times 10, equals to 900. And then I go to workstation Y, still got the same 90 units that we could possibly sell times by 15 minutes now, and we see that uh, 1,350 minutes is consumed by product A on workstation Y. Okay, so this is what we call our aggregate workload. Product B sells 85 minutes, and I look and I see X, W I should say, 14 minutes there. Okay. So 85 times by 14, and B consumes 1,190 minutes of time on Workstation X. If I add those two up, I get a total of 2,090. 
Now I have 2400 available. I'm going to use 2090. This is not a binding constraint. I have some spare workstation W capacity. Okay, so that's good news. I go to workstation X, I got 85. I'm going to produce workstation X, takes 20 minutes. Right, 20 minutes and that consumes a total of 1700 total those up and I get 2600 okay now that is more than the 2400 maximum available so that is a binding constraint I want to use more than I have and lastly we'll just do number Y 45 Y consumes 11 minutes so I get 935 and 2,285 total minutes. There is nothing that says there can't be more than one binding constraint. Now, when we're doing these by hand, one wouldn't be so mean as to do that, but if you have the power of the computer with you, perfectly reasonable. Often, often it is the case that you'll have more than one binding constraint. So, can we meet the demand for both products A and B? Well, the answer is clearly no. Um, and that's driven by the fact that Workstation X has 2,400 minutes available, but in order to produce all of the product A and product B that the market demands, we would need to consume 2,600 minutes. So we're 200 minutes short. Okay, So uh, Workstation X is keeping us from doing, producing as much as we possibly uh, want to produce. All right, now we get into the fun stuff. Since they can't make all of the demand, how much of each product should they make? Hint, they would like to maximize profit, the contribution margin per unit is equal to the price minus materials and the purchase cost. Okay, so now we're in a far more interesting situation. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this off here. Now we need to do a little bit of math. Okay, so we have that four-step process that we had from the slides. And the first step, okay, which we will imaginatively call step number one, is we need to find that contribution margin per unit of the bottleneck resource, which is where per minute of the bottleneck. Call that BN, so I don't have to write so much. So for product A, what does that look like? Well, product A, the contribution margin we calculated was to be $50 divided by the 900 minutes that product A consumes. And we get $0.0556 per minute. Okay. So that sort of tells us what uh, time at the bottleneck resources is worth to us to produce A about five and a half cents per minute. Product B, it also tells us how much we would like, we would, uh, if, if it's a bottleneck, how much we would pay to get more of it, the maximum extra we would pay. Uh, product B, $55, again, divided by the 900, and we get 0 0.032. Oops, sorry, divided by 1,700. Right, we take 1,700 minutes. So 0 0.0324, again, dollars per minute. Okay, So we could produce that little three cents, three and a quarter cents worth of profit, extra profit, every minute if we had a little bit more um, bottleneck resource for B. We could produce five and a half minutes, five and a half cents per extra minute of av extra availability for uh, if we, if uh, for workstation X, if we produced product A, product A clearly the bigger one. So when when we start to move into uh, step two, that's what we want to produce the most of. Okay, so A has got the higher contribution margin per minute. So we want to make as much A as as we can. So we're going to make 90 units of A. That's all we can sell. Now, when we make 90 units of A, we already know that that will consume 900 minutes 
of workstation x time. Right? We calculated that out. Don't need to calculate it out again. Okay. Yeah, so it uses 900 minutes of WS for workstation X. So we have to figure out how, how much is remaining. So a little bit of a tiny bit of a counting exercise in, in this process here. Uh, we started off with 2400 minutes. We used 900 minutes to make product A and now we have 1500 minutes to make available to make product B. Now we know from before that to make all the product B that we possibly want, we need 1,700 minutes. So clearly we know we're not going to make the full 85 units of product B. We just simply lack those resources. So how much can we produce? Ooh, well, that's the mystery. Okay. So, so for product B now, now we're thinking product B here. We have 1,500 minutes available. Right, this we know. And we want to know ultimately, approximately, I guess, how many units does that end up to be? I have minutes, I have units, therefore I must be dividing these minutes by something that is minutes divided by unit. So that I end up with units and the minutes cancel out. That way I don't have to memorize any formulas. Now what comes in minutes per unit? That data we had just before, right? We have 20 minutes per unit of product B is consumed by workstation X. We have 1,500 minutes available. We divide the two, and it comes out evenly this time, but it may not always be the case. Okay, And so product B, we can um, produce 7,500 minutes. If we have a remainder, we always round down, because if we only have a, a couple of minutes, we don't have the full 20. We can't then make a full product. Nobody wants a partial product because that's essentially another word for a broken product. So we always round down. Okay. So in the case if this was 75.99, we'd have to round her down to 75. So our optimal mix, right? And this by optimal we mean profit maximizing, is a product A. Gonna make all 90 units. For product B, we're going to make some of them, 75 units. Okay. So not a painful process at all. Uh, what's our profit? Uh, the all important profit at that point. Now, we have our, 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 uh, our contribution margins. We've already calculated those out. So we know we get $50 for every... This is gross profit, by the way. Okay. So we have fifty dollars times by the ninety units, plus fifty-five times by the seventy-five units, and so we've got a, a gross profit of eighty-five hundred dollars. Okay. Next step, if we want to find the profit, profit or net profit. Take that 86, oops, 25. But now we start minusing off our overhead. We have labor, $6, $6 per hour, I know. Can't do that in Alberta. Uh, times by 40. So we have $240 in, in labor costs there. And then some overhead. And there we go. We've got the remainder there. Forty-eight, eight hundred and eighty-five. Okay. And so that pretty much wraps it up for that particular question. The biggest deliverables there is the determining the aggregate workload. And then your next step is to uh, go from the aggregate workload into finding the optimal product mix.